Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some great games for game night. So Moon is hitting crowdfunding platform soon, so I thought we should launch right into five things you might want to know about it. <laughs> As for life in the space age, the construction industry will continue its lifelong love affair with housing you, the global public, offering some fantastic innovations in moon-based technology. There'll be new departures that herald even more exciting adventures in homemaking, with potato vats to provide you with fresh, nutritious meals, your very own distiller to create well-aged moonshine, and a food truck at your beck and call. New horizons in home comfort, your very own park and pub. And make sure to get those likes for your new pad and rake in the fame and adoration. And even though you're far from home, some things always remain the same. The future looks good, eh? Thing one, what's this game all about? So Moon is a card game in which you're trying to build the most popular space base. Um, so you're going to use cards, draft them, put them into play. That'll be different buildings or things to interact with. Um, that'll help make your moon base the most popular. Um, so as far as team goes, space here is something we're really familiar with and has been probably done to death, especially where you're terraforming or building on another planet. We all know this kind of stuff. However, there's a lot of detail being put into the theming in this game. Um, everything is named really well, the art is kind of fun, and I have to say, like, it's a really nice theme, and one that I enjoyed and I found really entertaining, so kudos to making this kind of a happy theming indeed. Um, now, similar games to this, well, I can't help but be reminded of one of my favourites, It's a Wonderful World, which is also kind of a card drafting game, and then you put things into your tableau. However, the big difference here between Moon and It is that Moon is definitely more goal orientated, as you want to score those during the game for points. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So Moon is very much a card drafting game and a tableau builder um, and over three rounds you're going to pick cards from your hand and um, put one into play into your moon base playing all associated costs and then you're going to take your hand you're going to pass it to the person next to you and the person next to you will pass you theirs and you'll continue drafting cards until there are none remaining. Um, now the cards you're getting are for things in your base. Some of them will produce goods because you need goods to play things. Some will give you victory points or kind of popularity points. Um, some will give you flags, um, which kind of are important for the scoring phase. I'll get you there in a minute. And some just kind of have interesting abilities you might want to interact with. Um, so at the end of each round, then there is a scoring phase and a production phase. And in this point um, whoever has the most of a particular type of flag will win a reward so hence the the flag important bit and then your um, factories or your buildings will produce um, and then you move on to the next round um, the interesting thing here is as the rounds change the cards change um, in kind of difficulty complexity um, you know how much they cost um, to put into play and such um, and you do this again and again until the end of round three um, so what the game really is about at, at its core is being efficient with your resources um, and kind of, I suppose, putting the right card into play at the, the right time. You don't really have much control over your hand because you're passing it away. So you need to be kind of perpetually ready. But overall, this is a very smooth and sleek design. It feels very polished and very finished. Um, and it's fun to play with to boot. Thing three on the table. So Moon is very akin to most tableau builders in the fact that it will sprawl on the table. Um, there are a number of goal cards you have to have lined out. Everyone has their own tableau. And while I do appreciate the fact that cards can stack on top of each other while you can read their abilities, there are a number of different types of cards as well. Um, so yeah, this is just good card gaming mess. Um, but <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, so it takes about 50 minutes for two of us to play and the setup is pretty fast because there was um, like an organizer inside the box, like a, a way to separate the different era of cards, which I appreciated. Um, and the rulebook here is really good as well. It managed to answer all of my niche questions while playing. 
Now, replayability wise, there's a good number of things to touch upon here. Um, notably that the gold cards change from game to game. There's a variety of those. There is a variety as well of first player um, cards that start in your hand um, and they'll have a special ability that people can use when they have the hand of cards. Um, and I like that very much. I think that's a really smart idea. Um, and there's a variety of those to swap in and out. But the thing to note here is that the era cards, I suppose, as you go from round one to two to three, um, will always be the same block of cards. And I found even after three plays that I was anticipating particular cards being available in a, you know, a later era. Um, and I don't know if that's a bonus or a boon depending on your play style. I think some people like to get very familiar with the game and have it very predictable whereas others like a little bit more random I suppose. Um, but there's still plenty here going on replayability wise to keep you busy. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well Moon is an absolutely lovely looking game. Um, I like the fact that it came in a long box, which is perfect for cards, and the colour of the box leaves no doubt as to whether or not this game is about space or not. It just kind of screams space. I think it's the pristine white, right? Um, the art in this game as well, I think, is incredibly attractive. I, I love seeing these ideas come to life of how you would basically win a popularity contest um, through a moon base. Um, and these things are quite delightful and fun and humorous. And I really enjoyed seeing what was on my next card or what wacky thing I would be putting into my base next. Um, component quality wise, I have a prototype copy, but you wouldn't know that. It looks like it came straight from a shop. The card quality is fantastic. The little rovers, I haven't even mentioned those yet. Little rovers inside the box and they're all little wooden pieces. They're lovely as well. Like everything about this feels polished and finished already. Like it's all in good nick. Um, so yeah, Moon like looks good, feels good. Yeah, I, I guess it's getting my popularity vote. Thing five, but is this game actually any good? Well, I'm delighted firstly to have finally got my own white long box, woohoo! Um, as you know, Sinister Fish Games have put out other games such as Villagers and Streets. This is their latest offering. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to have got one for myself. And you know what? I was pleasantly surprised um, with opening this up. Um, Moon is just such a, a fun game. Um, like. I didn't expect much from the theme because it's so overdone, but the way they tackle kind of space and the moon and this kind of popularity contest was actually really fun and endearing. I, ha I had a lot of fun building my moon base and adding cool places like the potato vats and the pub. Um, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, I have to say it was just really enjoyable and kind of refreshing. I do think that the theme and the mechanics go really well here and it feels like a, a whole complete game. Um, all of it just flows together so nicely. Um, the biggest drawback, I think, I, for me anyway, is this whole drafting the hand. Um, and my problem with it is, is that it means you have very little control over the cards you're going to be able to play. And when you need resources to play the cards, um, you can't build in a specific direction. Um, so for example, at two player, um, when you're drafting back and forth, each um, player will get two goes back to back because of the first player marker. And that essentially meant there would be two turns where I would do nothing and then two turns where I would do everything. And waiting in between to see if the card I wanted would come back or not, um, made it hard to kind of build a, an engine to focus on when there was, I wasn't sure what I was going to be able to do. Um, rather you're kind of forced to focus on being ready for everything and maybe that's the point, maybe that's what I was missing. But this is only it too, I can only imagine how chaotic this would get at three, four players um, where you would pass around your hand and it would be a very long time before seeing it again. So maybe for some that's a favourite, maybe not so much for me. Um, but yeah, I thought it was an interesting idea though to draft the cards like that. But it does, you lose a lot of the control as a player. Um, and maybe that's the fun of it. Who knows, maybe I'm just too uptight for this. Um, in other exciting news um, that I haven't mentioned yet, you have miniature rovers in this game and they do some of my favourite things. And, and this is that they allow you to use other people's cards. Um, and this is interesting in lots of ways because when, as you play kind of your production cards down or your flags, um, you can use them yourself but other people can use them. They give you a rover in exchange um, and so that you can use their stuff. Um, rovers are interesting because, well, they allow 
allow you to use other things. Um, but also rovers break ties. So that's kind of very important for that scoring phase with the flags. Um, so I've got three flags, you've got three flags, but hey, you've got four rovers and I do not. So, you know, you win. That stuff actually matters more than you might think. Um, but also just the ability to have access to goods that you may not have had a chance to yourself. Um, it's a nice kind of overcoming of that issue of the game where, you know, I didn't see this card I needed to produce the stuff I needed. So you can use everyone else's. I think that's actually really, really clever. Um, actually, everything about this game feels kind of slick and smooth and clever, to be honest. Um, I really like how it's put together. Um, this is a very well-rounded, polished game. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to like it. Uh, I know I did. Um, so, yeah, why not check it out online and see if you're interested in picking up a copy? I'll put like the date and the link below and definitely go and check it out. So the important question, do I think you should have Moon in your collection? I think if you enjoy tableau building and card drafting with a bit of a twist, then you really should go and check this one out. You've been watching Good L Games. Please like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Moon, why not shout them off in the comment box below. And tune in again next time for some more hopefully short and informative board game reviews. Thanks everybody.